Hello everyone, Donna Don here with the next update on the War Corsair project. As you can see, I managed to get the engine uh, mounted to the airframe this weekend. That's about as far as I got with it. Uh, yesterday I had a family reunion to go to, so I had to skip out for about three hours. Uh, so what I did is I got it mounted, used a cherry picker here, this little guy, picked her up, set it up in there, got it fitted, and then all day yesterday, after I got it mounted, I was going through the systems. I wanted to replace the belt. So, the belt's down here on the floor. The engine only had 5,000 miles on it, but it came out of a 1990. So, it's, you know, 30 years old. So, I wanted to replace that. And then the other issue I ran into is all the belt pulleys all rusted up. This one I threw in the blasting cabinet, blasted on them. That's the tensioner one. You can see how rusty everything got. Now this one I put in the cabinet blaster, but the problem is the glass beads apparently got into the bearings. They really don't turn very good. Uh, you could pop the seals on these, wash them all out, but I found out on the on eBay looking for a belt that uh, you can buy a belt, all four of these pulleys, and a water pump. You can see how these pulleys look. They all look like that. Or just raw steel. Uh, you can get this whole pump, these pulleys, let's see what else, the belt, you know, for crazy stupid cheap prices. Um, I've seen them down into the $40 range. The ones I'm looking at are about $70 and they go all the way up to $340, uh, depending on probably the quality. So I'm just going to order that whole kit. Uh, and then it also comes with new seals to put in each cam and the crankshaft. I think there's a couple other seals in there too for something, but I'm going to go ahead and buy that whole kit and just replace all those pulleys because these things are literally just a bearing. They're, the bearing is built right into the thing. You can't press the bearing out. This one has uh, probably a double row ball bearing in it. It's removable, but uh, it's not worth the trouble. Just replace them all. Uh, and then I'm going to put a new, th buy a new thermostat. I'm not going to trust that one. And then I cleaned up the, the housing for the new thermostat. I blasted that with the uh, blasting cabinet. And then what I'm trying to do now is get the water temp sensor fitted. This is the outlet off the top of the left side of the motor for the coolant sensor for the computer. And the problem is, is that's a straight thread 12 mil by 150. And the problem is, is I can't get a fitting to adapt to that, put a T-fit in there, T-fitting in, in order to hook up to an eighth-inch pipe, which is the idea of this, for the sensor itself. Water temp, the water temp and oil temp sensors are both exactly the same. Here's one with just a little bushing on the end of it. But they're both the same, identical. <laughs> and then also, I've got the pressure sensor. Here's the water temps or oil temperature sensor here is going to be fitted into this. Uh, I put this fitting in here and this is the oil pressure sensor for the gauges. Both of these are for the gauges. And this oil line goes to the gearbox, snakes up through here and comes down to this fitting. And then this brass fitting here, I pulled it out to clean it up in my cabinet. As you can see, it's got a restrictor in it, so about a 1 16th inch hole restrictor to restrict the oil flow into this. So I may have to put a smaller restrictor in there, I'm not sure. I remember on my Vortex superchargers, they used to have a really small hole to feed the gearbox in that. And this is literally just similar, real similar kind of gears. So, and then the neat thing with these motors, this engine mount installation, is you can do this with it. If I can get it swinging. I got it a little stuck. Let me get my foot up here. That's what you can do with this thing. You can so my connector here is in the way of swinging it so it doesn't catch electrical. The only thing is you got to disconnect most of everything in order to do that. So here you can see you can get to it. So I'll have to pull the sprockets off in order to change the seals just to be safe so it doesn't leak after it's up. It hasn't leaked to this point, but once you start putting some time on it, I pulled all the spark plugs out. These wires were a little longer. I took about three inches off of each end, off the coil end to shorten them up so they're not flopping around and rubbing on the inside of the cowling. And then as you can see, 
I got the brackets all installed. Got the uh, plates underneath, the rev nuts, or the backer anchors. And I uh, want to uh, send out a thanks to uh, Jim Dearborn, subscriber, subscriber to my channel. He uh, sent me these rivets. Uh, I gave him my address and he mailed them to me. So you can say that Jim's my first sponsor for my Corsair build. So I want to put a, a big thank you out to uh, Jim for sending these rivets to me. Really appreciate that. So that's where I'm at. I got uh, there's the fuel line return line. This is the fuel feed line. Fuel goes through the injectors, crosses over the other side, comes back to this hose on this side, and there's a regulator, the fuel pressure regulators, on the back end of this right here. So this is in the way. It's too big. It's going to stick out past the cowling, as you can see. So the nice thing is it bolts down here. I'll probably take this off. I don't know if I'll be able to use it. I don't know that I can really shorten this up. It's all plastic. I may have to make um, some kind of cap system on here. I'd like to keep it close to the dipstick. So when I put the door on the, ac the access door in here for checking the oil, if I need to add it, I can still do that without removing the cowling. So those two, it's nice that they're together, but this is too far out, so it's got to be shaved off. And then, as you can remember, this little tanky here, you know, it fits in nicely here. Like I said before, it's, it was designed to fit right in there, but it's a little, little tall here, so I'm probably just going to cut about an inch or so out of here and shorten it up, and that should be good to go. <clears throat> uh, so I didn't get a whole lot done, but it took me a while. I had to wire these three sensors into the back side of this plug. So they all had to be in there, pins, and then I put all the extra pins in there to seal everything up. So I shouldn't have to put any more wires. I got the two black wires that has to be grounded to the motor for the water temp and oil temp. So I got water temp, oil temp, and oil pressure. And everything goes through this, comes out through here, goes to the instrumentation. So that's where we're at. And then uh, I got, you can see I got most of these hoses all pulled apart. All right, so what I've been trying to find is some place to mount this little bugger, the coolant temp for the gauge. and I got. I remember seeing before they sell these inline adapters. You can take and cut this hose, stick it in there. It's like a little piece of tubing that looks uh, similar to this, double-ended, and it has a spot in the middle with a hole drilled in, so you can screw a sensor in it for uh, like a fan switch, electric fan switch. So I was trying to find it, and I just took me like an hour to find these things on eBay. But they're essentially called an adapter, uh, temp sensor adapter radiator, but I tried all combinations of words and I finally found one, but it was over in the UK or something and I kept searching and I finally found some in the United States. I found some in um, Virginia, I think it was Virginia, and some in California. So anyway, turns out they're like $16. You can get it, they call it 26 millimeter for a one inch hose, which this is. So I'm either going to cut this hose and put it in here, which I probably have more room over here. Or the other hose, which comes off of that fitting on the bench, goes down in there, you can see. That's where that piece adapts, and then the hose comes and hooks to, the, hooks to that pot, this overflow tank. So it's probably going to fit, probably fit in here somewhere nicely. So I'm going to get that ordered tonight. I'm going to order some, uh, probably either some epoxy, maybe some paint, try and get most of these items ordered up, get that stuff coming in. And then I can finish buttoning this up, you know, get the belts, everything, put that all together. And then I can finally tackle the wings. There's the belt for the alternator. I had to take it off. It's back here. I had to take that off to uh, get the main belt off. So, But it'll be a peace of mind to replace the seals, put a fresh belt in, new pulleys, tensioners. Um, I'll change the oil afterwards. Uh, once I did have this on here, I blew through these hoses and a bunch of rust dust came out. So that was basically the main reason for pulling this off. As you can see, that rusted up from, because I just had regular straight water in it at one point just to uh, run the engine. And then I drained it out before winter. And I'm going to change the thermostat just because. So get all that stuff changed out. 
and that should uh, give you a little peace of mind. Spark plugs, I noticed that what some water got in and rusted these. These were brand new. Uh, you can tell it's been running rich because I did a bunch of running because without any water in it, the water temp sensor doesn't read correct, so it causes it to run a little richer than it should. Uh, I haven't put the muffler back on, but once the muffler gets up in there, I need to put some kind of heat shield in here to protect the oil pan, maybe something around the motor mounts to keep it from burning paint and stuff off. And then also on the bottom of the cowling, I want to try and find some of that aluminum foil. Uh, Norm, if you've ever seen a inside of a snowmobile, they'd line the inside of the fiberglass hood with this uh, aluminum foil matting kind of material. It's heavy aluminum foil and it protects the insul uh, it insulates the fiberglass cowling from burning. So I'm going to try and find something like that to put on the bottom of the cowling to protect that. So, and maybe a little bit of that white uh, blanket if I have enough. But it's, I know it's going to get kind of toasty down there. And the cowling fits close enough that you don't have a lot of airflow. But there is, should be some airflow down through here, through these openings. Uh, but they still need to be lined. So, I guess that's going to do it for this week's video. i got to get in and get some stuff ordered and get that stuff coming for next weekend. And hopefully I can get enough pieces and parts, get this stuff all back together. And uh, like I say, get the fuel tank, fuel pumps fitted and all that, and make sure the lines still hook up to that. And once you put power to it, get the instrument panel on there, you should be able to start the thing again, get it running. I'll, I'll flush it out with some straight water first, and then I'll put in a 50-50 mix of antifreeze. So that's going to do it for this week, folks. Um, as always, thanks for taking time to watch my videos, and feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns, and I will answer them as they come along. Uh, I did have one guy asking about the cowing. He was asking how it was going to come apart, and he may have missed it, but those hinges are actually designed where you can pull the pin out from the back side. There's enough clearance, I think, between the fuselage that I can arrange this so you can pull this pin out on both sides, and then the cowling will come apart. If you take off the screws that hold the top or the bottom, you can just take off the upper half or the lower half, or you can just unbolt the thing, unscrew it, take the whole thing off completely as one unit without separating it. But that's the purpose for those piano hinges in there. So you can separate the cowling, like if you want to work on it. If you've got an exhaust problem, you can just pull the bottom off. If you've got to work on the top end, you just pull the top off. Or it may just be as easy to pull the 11 screws and remove the whole thing. And then it looks like this. So as soon as I can get this stuff buttoned down, get this out of the way, get the other part cut down, Get the cowling on there. I think everything looks like it's going to fit good. You can see the motor is tucked in. You look down the side of the fuselage, it's not going to touch anywhere. It's going to be close with a couple of lines, but I think it should clear fine. This is kind of um, something I did to get it to work. Uh, if that's going to clear fine, then I will uh, make a bracket and attach this and then find some kind of filter to put on here. But that'll just be tucked inside the cowling. The cowling's gonna come out, you know, within an inch of the prop, I guess. It's probably gonna be somewhere along here. So that's all inside. That was like the best configuration. And then you can see here's the throttle cable coming up to the throttle. This stuff had kind of rusted. I'll pop that off, strip it down, and zinc plate those parts. Uh, spring's a little rusted. This I may have to make a another one of these, but uh, if I use this, I can strip her down and re zinc plate that stuff. Uh, that's the tensioner for the belt, for the timing belt, but that's basically all the parts off of it. So, all right, I had to bring this out to match up the wiring uh, to get the wires hooked up to the correct places in there so everything works when I put power to it. All right, that's going to be it now. So, again, thanks for watching. There's my muffler. And uh, stay tuned. I should have another video ready for next weekend. And hopefully if I can get this thing done, I can get started on those wings. The wings should go fairly quick. They shouldn't take any time. But I'm going to need gonna need epoxy primer to paint it. So I'm still trying to push to get this thing done here, hopefully by the end of September. We'll see. 
All right, folks, that's going to be it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. This is Dino Don out.